Welcome to the Triple Point Podcast, a podcast for those working at the intersection of weather and climate, technology, and society. We focus on innovators and leaders working to make our community safe and resilient in the face of a dynamic and ever-changing world. I am your host, Ryan Harris, and this week, Jeff is off starting a new job, and we're going to try out a couple of different formats with our Triple Point Podcast. And this one will be our five minute lightning podcast, catching you up quickly on triple point topics. In our last show, if you're able to catch it, we talked about wildfires in your neighborhood with Matt Stratton from an emergency management perspective. This week, we are talking about the heat and the heat has definitely been on around the globe. In India and Pakistan, temperatures soared above 50 degrees Celsius. That's above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which shattered records going back 120 years through their entire period of record. Normally, that's a May or June phenomenon for that region, but those populations, especially the poor and the vulnerable in city centers, saw these record-breaking temperatures a whole month earlier in April this year. Here in the United States, a little closer to home, the midsection of the country from Texas to Michigan has been broiled in that heat. Amarillo, Texas, for instance, saw 100 degrees Fahrenheit at the earliest point in its record books. And Traverse City, Michigan, saw that as well, with temperatures reaching into the 90s this early for the first time in its recorded history. In general, though, it's not the heat that's been unprecedented. It's how much earlier in the year we are seeing it. Interannual variability patterns like La Nina have been contributing to some of that heat as well. So what are some of the effects on society? The obvious effects are direct heat impacts to human health. Studies have shown that human survivability goes down anytime the temperature generally gets above 42 degrees Celsius or about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not that we can't survive in those temperatures, but over time, your body begins to degrade during that heat. At those temperatures, the body essentially is unable to cool itself. So other factors start shutting down in the body. This is especially a problem when you add humidity into the mix. So the human health piece is pretty obvious from a heat exposure perspective. Some of the effects of heat though are not quite as obvious. There are other factors like agriculture and energy and wildfire that are exacerbated by the heat. India took steps over the last few weeks, for example, to shut off some of its grain exports because the excessively high temperatures impacted its grain production. In Texas, six power plants had to go offline because of the excessive amount of heat. Authorities asked the public to conserve its energy use, particularly in the highest peak hours in the afternoon and evening. Wildfires we talked about last week is a significant issue, and the heat fuels those wildfires as some of those areas become more arid and dry in the heat. It also makes quite a challenge for firefighters racing to battle not only the fires themselves, but the heat exposure, which limits their ability to fight the fire effectively. As the globe continues to warm, Heat stress impacts will continue to be accentuated by increasing urbanization as more and more people migrate into the cities. So let's take a look at that final leg of our treble point podcast, and that's the technology leg. We can observe and we can forecast the impacts of heat. Weather instruments measure typical weather observations, including not only the temperature, but also the humidity. You also have some unique satellite and other overhead sensing technologies. NASA, for instance, has its EcoStress instrument aboard the International Space Station that's able to look at the heat effects in urban areas. Forecasts from the National Weather Service and even some private industry providers combine heat and humidity to improve accuracy and forecasts out to 10 days and even beyond. There's even some unique wearable technology that the Air Force and industry are investing in to monitor the heat for an individual and can even tailor the heat loads on an individual based on their height, weight, and body makeup. This kind of technology will be important for construction workers, agriculture workers out in the field, airport personnel on heart tarmacs, and others working out in the heat. From a communication standpoint, there are the standard technologies that emergency managers use, like wireless emergency alert system that come through your cell phone. There's also tech companies out there like Disasterware and even Google that are communicating these warnings from authoritative sources to users, and even local and state governments are getting into the mix when it comes to extreme heat. California has recently proposed an extreme heat naming system similar to how the National Hurricane Center names hurricanes. We will see how far and wide that might scale. So that's our show for the week. The heat is on and the summer is upon us. Stay hydrated, stay well, 
We look forward to hearing from you and your feedback. Give us a shout at triple point podcast at the number 81 degrees.com. That's triple point podcast at 81 degrees.com. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next triple point.